G'day, how you going? Ian Applis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel where I like to give you these free gifts and show you what you can paint in acrylic. You would have seen the size of my canvas that I'm using and I'll also get some colours up the screen. Now this is going to be a subtle but effective painting. Depending how big you do it, will give you the different types of impact. Now it's going to be a sun setting over the ocean with some distant clouds just hovering around the sun. It's not too much going on in this painting, but there's just enough to make it go wow. All right, so get on over here and let's get into it. So on my canvas, my horizon line is going to be way up here because your horizon line is your eye level. Now you're standing at the beach, so that's where your horizon line would be in this layout. Now down here, I've got a few lines. I've got one line, two lines. We've got here the shadow, we've got the damp sand, that's the damp sand, and this line here is the edge of the water. It's going to be a subtle wave here. The sun will be setting here with our sky and beautiful glistening reflections down in the water and the wet sand. So down here I have my retarder and the craft white, soft titanium white. I just call it craft white, but it's a soft bodied titanium white. And I want to get a bit of retarder in that just so as I'll have enough time to blend my sky colours. Now I want to get this and do the whole canvas. I put those pencil lines there just so you can see what's in my mind. But you can do this kind of painting in order in these sections and make it up. You don't have to draw it out, but if you want to, you can. Now I just want to get this all over the canvas so I'll have the water, everything there done. Now what I do normally is I push it on to the tooth of the canvas with me putter on a brush. It's all lumpy and bumpy. And then I'm going to stroke it left and right this way, so because that's the way I want to finish my brush strokes in the water. And this will push that down to a thin, even film of acrylic paint with some retarder in there. And that's going to act like a magic white where we can get some beautiful colours blending, whether you want it to be cool or warm colours. Now I want to start off with, uh, let's say, me Indian yellow. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to paint the whole canvas, blending it. I've got yellow oxide, yellow ochre, oxide, whatever you want to call it, and I've got cronacridone violet there. Now I want to, let's say, about that high and about that low. This is all my yellow. Look how easy this is going to be. Fade it up into there, bring it down, fade it to there. Now I'm going to slowly get rid of those brush strokes. I'm going to pick up some more of that so as I can get it more intense like watch this just stamp it on up and down we're not having to think too much here just knowing what to do will get things done and then we want to push that and we've got some heavier intense pieces of our yellow indian yellow there i want to pick up the yellow oxide or the yellow ochre and start bringing this into that yellow there so I'll try stamping it on first turn it around get some more there we go and just around here as well the me horizon lines here I'm kind of leaving it open with the Indian yellow now I'll give this a bit of a stroke left and right push it right up to the top there we go, gently with the tip of my brush. Now I'm coming to the water half. I'm pushing it now right at the bottom where that sand's going to be. Now I want to pick up the quinacridone violet on both sides of this brush and gingerly put it in. Just at the very top here. It's going to be a hint of this colour. So I'm pushing it on my canvas, stamping it down like so. There we go, I'll get that bottom pushed. I'm going to change that later because that's going to have more darker shadow there. And we want to gingerly see how that's, you can see the distinct two colours. I want to disturb that. This is what I want as pale as buggery. And now I'll just blend it through the sky. If I feel I need a bit of yellow, like as an example, I'll put some there and just wash it through. And there we go. 
All right, I want to grab me titanium white from the tube. It's a bit thicker than that first craft paint that I had. I'm using a fan brush just to scratch in some clouds. Now this paint is going to go quite pale yellow, which is what I want it to do up here on the canvas. So where was my horizon line? Somewhere here. Where are we? Uh, about here, that line there. So I want these clouds roughly, let's start doing the top ones first. So I want to stamp it on in a way, get it up and down billowy. These are long clouds and you're going to need a smaller blending brush just to blend them down into the sky there. Grab yourself a blending brush and a cloth. And what I want to do, I want to keep the tops of that there and just kind of tassel the bottom down, pulling it. Oh, I always like to give them a bit of a drag, pull it down into there. Just keeping the top, kissing the top a little bit, tickling the tops. And just dancing that to a degree where it looks like subtle but effective cloud. Now we've got to build them up a bit. And I want to get like another one now in front of that, nice and bright. Use what brush, I, I, I love you, I don't know why, I just always use the fan brush for stamping me clouds on. I'm going to come under that a bit. Just something like that, there we go. Maybe something there. Same again, I'm gonna find the top of that. Pull it down. Just so you've got a couple of layers there. Now I do wanna grab some of the yellow ochre. Maybe a little bit of that with it. There we go, just to get some shadow in some of these clouds silhouetting. So let's say something here, and I want to silhouette something there, right there like that, over here. They're just nice long things, look at that. So easy to do, and we can probably get a bit of shadow in the guts here. It's a rainy day today. Now don't worry, you might have disturbed some of your white, but that's okay, we can we could still add the yumminess to there. Now I want to sit this down like a cloud behaviour, just there. You need these shadows in there to give the grunt to your clouds. Now here we go, that, let's say here, I want to come over that bit there a little bit, just with a little bit of light, there we go. And back here, put some more light there, just with my fan brush. Just sitting though, that shadow cloud down. And here, we'll brighten that where we lost it again. Come there, under there. Okay, I have my pouncer. I'm going to wet this with that craft paint and then pick up this thicker bodied stuff. And I just want to twist the sun in there somewhere around here. So I'm trying to leave the top out. I'm going to get another blending brush and push the top out. I'm going to grab a small flat and I want to try and push that sun down. So what I'm going to do, just pick up this flat, it's dry, it's got nothing on it. See the top of my sun? I want to disturb that in the cloud there, just like so. There we go. Wipe that. You can use this as a blending brush as well, just to get things a little bit better in there. And I just want to crisp some more white, and I want to glare right there in front, pick up a bit more, and create the glare of this cloud there. Now I'm stamping it on, a bit of brightness here. There we go, and soften it back into the cloud at the top and at the bottom of the top. Look for shadows, I feel I've lost a bit of shadow there. I want some more shadow here, so I'm going to have to pick up some more of that. Just to stamp in front of the sun there, just like that. There we go. Just 
still make it look the part. Okay. And I'll grab the white again and just kind of crisp it up with some fine but lovely detail. Keeping that shadow colour there, don't put too much highlight in it. A little bit of something here. There we go. Now this line down here, we're going to have the shadow, where we want the wet sand, we want this colour here because this sky colour is what reflects in your wet sand, okay? So I want to grab the yellow ochre and the Indian yellow, we'll find what value is going to work for us. And I want to get this coming along here, sort of coming on an upward position there, that'll do. And along here. Now I'm going to have to stamp it on because that got craft paint retarder underneath it. It's acting like a, a waterbed mattress. If, if you poke it too hard, it'll pop and bring all the other liquids through. So I'm just going to stamp this on and drag it like that just so I can kind of get me damp sand vibe there. And if it's not making sense to you yet, it will when we add the watercolour on there. But knowing what to do always helps getting the job done the way it should look. Now what I do want to do is just where this is meeting that shadowy sand, I want to kind of break it a bit. There we go. Just break it so it's not a hard transition. Now just my horizon is going to be here. So just where I have the horizon, I do probably want a little bit more darker. So I'll just sort of Bring some of this there, somewhere out there maybe. That'll do. Just something. And then I'll drag it through. Now let's grab this sun colour, which is just the Indian yellow and a lot of white. So I'm going to grab some of that. Off the side there, check it for value, yep, yeah, there, and white. Now I'm using a flat brush just so as I can tether it the shape that I want it to be. So in a straight line from your sun, you want to come down, and in the sand there, you want to start putting a thin bit, and then a thicker bit, and tapering it with this flat brush. Now if it's not going to sit good enough for what you want it to, you can dry your piece. I haven't dried mine yet, so I'm just going to try and give it a go like this. And we can intensify it with a bit more brighter white add adding into it. But just dance it on just like so. I will dry it. Okay, that's had a dry. And we'll set that lighter yellow brighter yellow on top of there, watch the difference again. There we go. And we can always, at the end, add more or less of this if we feel it's not enough or too much. But I'm sort of tapering it. You'll see when I put the rest on how I wanted it to be. And also, in here, well, I'm going to have that wave there, so I could probably have littlest bits tapering up in the water, because we're going to do a lot of dark here, so you're not going to see a lot of this, but it's there, and um, wherever, there's our sun. Now grabbing me mask and tape, my horizon line's going to be right there. See where that dark is? So that's, I'll put that up there. 
Now I've got some cobalt blue and Prussian blue. Uh, the Prussian blue is going to create the darkness of me blue. That's the only reason why I've got the cobalt, I mean the Prussian down there. Now I just want to chisel it onto a flat brush so as I can start stamping the water and I want it all pretty dark from about there, let's say to about this point. So what I want to do first is pretty much come along the horizon line like so and then start slicing it but leaving tiny little bits of that sky colour within the water, tiny little bits. And the further down we come, the more it will gradually open up. But I've got to put a lot of dark out here as well. So we're doing it in stages. You'll see just what happens. And this will be a beautiful way a beginner can get a beautiful piece of ocean, crisp, sharp sunset and across their canvas. Now, I'm being careful when I'm stabbing it not to ruin the, the sharp tip. So I've got it on an angle. Now this is going to be tedious, so I won't film the whole lot of this. I'll do so much and then I'll do the rest off camera so I won't bore the living buggery out of you. Now I've given that a dry and I'm picking up the Prussian blue, the dark one. And all along here now, we want to get the darker vibes in. Now be careful not to destroy too much a little lighter pockets. You don't want this all solid. You just want this probably radiating about this low down. But having that lighter colour there, this darker colour here is just going to make up the distance in the water. And why I'm doing it like this, it's sort of got that dotty, stipply look where you get that shimmer look across the top of your water out there in the big wide broad ocean. Now while I have this dark I want to get my wave in which where the water is hitting this sand here we need a, a nice dark rim of this here. It can have some kind of scallops in it because it's just water. This is the edge hitting the, the damp sand. There we go. We need that there and then from there we could start doing our dark wave. I want it about here somewhere. Where's there? Somewhere just there and I'm going to press heavy to make it wider all the way off the painting there. Now I can control the width of that by getting it to the height I want which I want it about up there but keeping it level at the top coming down as well. So we made a nice kind of a scallop there, a dark scallop. And probably a little bit just to this side. So we'll come there, there, there. Just something like that. Because this is in silhouette. Underneath there. Just like that. We can add these darker bits back over the lighter colour if we need to. I'm just giving you an idea what's going to be there. So when you've watched the video, you'll see how all this came into play. Now I'm grabbing the cobalt blue. From here now to this wave, those lines are more further apart. And just at the top of this wave, we need to leave the minutest gap of that yellowy sky colour there as well. And we're going to if anything, do scallopy stuff like that, but on a more controlled and artistic way. So let's see how we go. And you will see it's slowly taken form. Now I have seen pictures of water like this, so this is where I'm getting me knowledge from, knowing how it looked. 
Now down here, we want it in between this and that. Leaving the minutest bit of the sky colour within this. Get that in there. Now these more relaxed brush strokes that we did here in this section, I'm just going to sit them down now with the same method of stamping, but not too much, just kind of come over them and sit them down into your work, leaving enough open bits there to make the water look convincing that it's got a, a swelly surface on the top instead of flat. Now what I want to do is grab some of this cobalt blue and taint it because I want some white on the water but I don't want it pure white. I want to taint it with this blue. There we go. And now I need enough water in it so it'll flick off my toothbrush. So I'm going to incorporate some water into that pile. There we go. It's quite wet. Now what I want to do with this flat toothbrush, I come on the edge there and start picking it up in the toothbrush. So it's just the tips are loaded. It's not glugged right down the bristles. See, they're just loaded there. That's important to get a good flick. I've put extra tape over my sky so I don't ruin it. And I want to kind of get, don't want to come down here. I want to try and get, let's just see. Get a bit more on there. I don't think I've got enough. There we go. This is going to add the shimmer to our water. See the, the dark in the wave, it's gone over that, so that's fine, we can put that back. And we need some of this light right over that dark to make those darks pop. And look how much, I can, there's a big thick one there, I don't like that. Look how much I can control this. Sometimes when you do it with a fan brush, you can get weird snaky runoff lines flicking, but this one does it as a, like a spray gun. Um, that's okay. I'm grabbing that dark blue again, the Prussian blue, and I'm just, anywhere I feel too loud and blobby, I'm just kind of sitting them down. That's what it's all about, backwards and forwards with everything till you tuned it up the way you want. Everything needs a tune to be perfectly looking. And we've got some, I've gone over these waves, got those white dots out of there. I'm just gonna fix up this bottom here where some of the dots went there. If I can, there we go. And I will fine tune the sun reflection. I'm going to grab the yellow and this. just use this craft white. I want some of it a lot wider now, a lot brighter and whiter than what I put on earlier, before. So we've got, where's my sun? I can take this tape off now. You can see how it's hitting against the sky. It's looking the way it should. And there's our line, so we want this. reasonably straight coming down. A nice bright bit on the back of that wave there. All the rain. And now this white, this is a lot more brighter, so we'll get some of this stamped in there and I even go a little bit brighter again just to fine tune this wet sand glare up. Just to get this shadow sand the right value, I've got some yellow ochre and dioxine purple. 
I want to mix them, get a bit of water in it, just to get it the value I want. The very bottom, just get it reasonably dark and taper it up into that other colour there. can hear the rain, the rain's falling down on the roof. Yeah, that's where it falls. Just enough. Now I've just mixed some of the dioxine purple and the Prussian blue here and then got a bit of water in the mix as well. And I just want to get a detail brush so I can stamp on some little, little small but effective detail stones in the foreground. Just so it doesn't look so plain. And we just want to simply, I don't know, like we'll get some in the, let's see how they're going to go first over here. We'll get some in the reflection there, just like so. And just get it enough so you can just do one stamp for one stone, like, just like so. Spread them out, don't get too crazy. And we want some in here as well, that they can be a little bit bigger. Because obviously they're closer. And these little details just add that much bullshit to your painting. It's unbelievable and it costs you nothing. Now also, just to give it that little bit more of bullshit, find some of them and just grab the slightest line, just like that. On some of the big ones. Just like that. That'll do. I might put a, a bird in the sky just up there. Just one. It's a little buddy up in the sky there. I'm just going to sign this and then we'll re pull the tape off to reveal it. And I want to use this opportunity to thank my patrons and my YouTube channel members who support my content every month. It's much appreciated and creators like myself go a long way when we get support from our avid supporters. And if you're new here, send me a message, say hello, I'll say hello back. And check out the links in the description below. Okay, there we go, that ain't too shabby. You can even put a couple of more birds in the sky, someone wading in the water if you like. Uh, we've got our sunset, pretty simple and effective, and I know you can do it. Well, that was a lot of fun, exciting to do, all in acrylic, and if you like what I'm doing, you be sure to tell your friends, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, check out this other video here of mine. Goodbye, good luck, good on you.